Hey everybody, James Slattery here uh, with a hot new video for all the SEO and internet marketing people. Um, I apologize for the delay in getting out new videos. Basically, I've been hit with a ton of client work and uh, some moves with my office. All good things pointing towards the future. Um, talking about the future, I am maintaining a list of topics that I'm going to be covering in future videos. A couple of ideas to whet your appetite. Um, some of the future videos that I'm going to be doing here for free on YouTube will include WordPress syndication, mass page sites, building the best directory sites on WordPress, automated blogging, AI content, GMB and organic audits, Google News and more. And of course, uh, they all have my twist and uh, new techniques and things that I don't believe that other people are covering um, in relation to those topics. Now, today we're going to talk about the program that I feel is the hottest thing out there, Browser Automation Studio. Uh, there's so many uses for it for um, SEO and internet marketing. And what I've been seeing in the groups, in the Facebook groups is, yeah, but can you do this? Yeah, but can you do that? And the answer is yes, yes, yes. Uh, you can do anything with uh, Browser Automation Studio. There's some tricks, and basically what I'm here to do is not to give you a walkthrough step-by-step -step or an SLP on how to use Browser Automation Studio because everybody uses it differently. Everybody does SEO differently. What I'm doing is I'm putting the seeds, uh, planting the seeds so that you guys can uh, take it further. Um, basically, what we're going to deal with today is utilizing a browser-based remote access uh, service such as um, Chrome Remote Desktop. And basically, Browser Automation Studio can control that. Um, it can control any program that resides on that remote access machine. It can take content that you feed into Browser Automation Studio and drop that content. So it could be reviews. It could be web page content, a new blog post, whatever. You can automate it to do anything. It can use accounts. It can use proxies. We saw that in a previous video that I did. If you didn't catch that one, it was a good intro to uh, Browser Automation Studio. Um, number three on this list is uh, remember that BAS needs extensions. So basically, uh, the browser within uh, Browser Automation Studio has no extensions. It doesn't inherit the extensions from your browser. It needs them dropped in there into the directory. It needs them extracted for them to be able to work. And for this, you'd need the Chrome Remote Desktop extension. Um, basically, any program that exists on the remote PC can be run. For this example, I use Chrome Remote Desktop. Easier options do exist. And if you were to look for another option, I would say that the weak side here and the um, bottleneck would be that it uses the extension. And if you found a uh, remote access uh, that was browser-based that didn't use an extension and was more server-based, which Chrome Remote Desktop really isn't, um, it would run faster and better. Um, so that would be the future improvement on this process. And uh, just keep in mind that we're clicking coordinates. And in some cases, in more abstract uh, uses of this technique, um, you're not just clicking on coordinates, but you're waiting for things to show up on the screen, which Browser Automation Studio does have implements to be able to identify images or content on the screen. And we're not necessarily dealing with web content in this uh, example because once we jump into Chrome Remote Desktop, it's not so much web-based web -based content. It's more, you know, coordinates. It's clicking on the screen. It's, re it's a regular automation tool. Um, so basically, here is the Browser Automation Studio. I have my script written here. And, you know, you know the way that Browser Automation Studio works is you build your... Uh, program by recording your actions here and you uh, will see those actions show up on the left hand side you can run play stop or it'll rerun <clears throat> and these are the actual um, explanations for you know the uh, line by line coding that you're doing with your recording 
And what ends up happening is uh, I've, in this example, I've logged in via Browser Automation Studio and my account into my Chrome Remote Desktop. Now that remains constant because that's always going to be my account in the future. You know, parts of this uh, example, we're going to use accounts to you know visit websites, etc., and those would be randomized from a text file. So we click on a computer. Once we log into Chrome Remote Desktop, it presents us with a list of the computers that we have access to that are available and can be clicked on. And once we click on them, <clears throat> a browser automation studio, you know, it says click on here, click on the set menu. You know, we actually visited the Chrome Remote Desktop site, etc. And then we get to this, and once we click on the computer, we see the computer screen. Now. Browser Automation Studio can have us click on any of these icons to actually make them run anything and through the programming here and bringing in resources from a text file or from the outside or from a database, we can actually have it utilize accounts, proxies, and you know drop content so you can literally do anything. Um, the next example, um, we clicked on Visor, which is a screen mirroring for cell phones, and we actually were able to bring up the cell phone. And once we bring up the cell phone, we aren't able to interact with this as if it were the browser screen, even though it is technically a browser, but it's a browser within a an app running in a browser. So we can click on items in here based on visual content not actually the words, but the visual content. So you'd actually take a screen capture of, you know, Orange County, New York data recovery, and you could click on it and you could click on the first call button and you could, you know, make a call or you could, you know, visit the site, etc. You could do CTR, you could drop reviews, you could upload pictures, you could do whatever you want and you can do it all with proxies and accounts. So basically mobile mirroring extends this whole thing so you know we're now talking about browser automation studio being a tool that's able to automate browser stuff then it's able to automate pc stuff now we're taking it to the third level and it's able to automate controlling a cell phone through remote through mirroring and yes it did was able to click on the uh websites it was able to do searches it was able to you know, leave a review and the review could have been, you know, a static review that I programmed into Browser Automation Studio or it could have brought it in through uh, a text file. And as it uses up each review, it can delete them or it can cycle through them, do whatever, it can do the same with proc with the uh, accounts, Google accounts. So basically, uh, if we go back through the process, um, you know, basically, Browser Automation Studio just opened up, went to the web address for Chrome Remote Desktop, typed in my username and password, brought this screen up, clicked on the PC. Once I clicked on the PC, I saw my PC screen. Now, because this is no longer like addressable web content, now all the clicks that happen on this screen are based on coordinates, XY coordinates, but you don't have to come up with them. You just click on them yourself and Browser Automation Studio says, oh, that's, you know, X, 248 Y700 and it'll click on that icon and then you tell it yeah I want to double click and that'll actually open up the program and then you go on to the next phase of your process of what you want to automate with Browser Automation Studio. Now some of this does take time some of it you have to build in built-in weights so that uh, it makes sure that the stuff that it's going to be clicking on is actually there so you do have to do a decent bit of experimenting. There's actually more experimenting and stuff on the back end like that than there is in figuring out the process because it's recording process and making small edits to the recording process is so easy and straightforward. Um, and like I said, you know, we were able to click on visor, which is screen mirroring for a cell phone, bring the cell phone up on the screen and uh, once we brought it up on the screen, it was able to uh, interact with it and, you know, click inside the address window, type a URL, go to a GMB, click on the GMB, you know, leave a rating, leave a review, do whatever. And it can do that all programmatically. So you could literally have, you know, a file of reviews. You can have a file of accounts, a file of proxies and go to town. Lastly, 
<clears throat> if you learn to work with lists and files in uh, Browser Automation Studio, um, that's the gist of you know what you have to learn on your own in this process. The sky's the limit, and it's very easy. And they literally have a, a method for utilizing files for every single scenario, whether you not you want to only read the first you know entry in the file when you open it up. Do you want to read a random entry in the file when you open it up? Or when after you've utilized it, do you want to go to the next one or do you want to delete the one that you're currently using? It makes it very easy. They walk you through it in dialogue screens. Um, basically, the way that we showed this, anything that you can do on a PC or phone can be told with Browser Automation Studio with this method. And uh, finally, you know, uh, another warning that, you know, phone mirroring and remote access are slow. Um, so these methods are best used on a VPS or uh, Proxmox server, which is a hypervisor for virtual machines, so that you can have multiple installations of Windows 10 on, uh, you know, one server or computer. And the reason for that last note here is, uh, you know, when you remote into a computer, it's not going to be as fast as sitting at the computer. It has to transmit that stuff across the internet. Then you have the added bonus of trying to push the phone mirroring into that computer and that's going to be another bottleneck but if you program it correctly in browser automation studio it can build in those weights and delays to make sure that the stuff that it's going to click on is actually there and then click on it to proceed properly and uh, if you do that on your own computer, you can be like, hurry up, you know, I need to get back to my computer and run some jobs, check my email, whatnot. You run on a VPS or a Proxmox server, you can set it and forget it, and it can take as long as it wants, and you can build in crazy weights. You can build, you know, one-minute wait for every single web page that comes up on the screen. Who cares because it's on a VPS? As soon as you run the job, you're going to log off, and it'll do, it'll take, whether it takes 30 minutes or 8 minutes, doesn't matter to you when it runs on a VPS or Proxmox server. So uh, this method works. I'm utilizing it for a number of different things in my you know, uh, business with my SEO clients. So if you have any questions or concerns, leave them in the uh, comments below. Definitely like and subscribe and look forward to hitting you guys up with some great future videos. Uh, on topics that I mentioned earlier, but we have pages and pages of topics that we're going to be covering. So look forward to helping you guys out with that. Take care. Have a great day.